Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and this week I'll be talking about the release. And in recent times, a lot of people think that the release comes mainly from the body. But in this video, I'm going to talk about what all the best ball strikers actually do. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf related content. So I recognize that the term release is a very loose term. Um, it's not very specific, but in my view, when I think about release, I think that that's the point at which the club head begins to overtake the hands and start to accelerate faster than the hands. Now, if the club head itself travels at the same rate as your arms and hands, like so, throughout the swing, it makes it a bit more difficult to produce a lot of speed. Now, all of the best ball strikers understand this. So if you can learn to get the club head to accelerate past your hands and arms and learn to utilize your arms and wrists correctly, then that's the best way to form a healthy and long lasting swing. Okay, so if I just demonstrate kind of what happens uh, closer to impact. So when you get to the top of the backswing and you get closer down to impact, just up until the club is pretty much parallel to the ground, you'll notice at this position here that my trail arm is bent, my lead wrist is fairly flexed or fairly flat, and my trail wrist is extended back, okay? Now, as you get even closer into impact, this is when the, the angles in my trail arm will start to straighten out more and more, okay? Now, in addition to the angles in your trail arm starting to straighten out, your arms are gonna actually start to pronate and supinate, okay? So supination is just for the lead arm, it kind of turns open like this, and pronation for the trail arm is when it turns kind of inwards this way, okay? So if you were to get closer into impact and just straighten out your arms only without adding any pronation or supination, okay, you can see that the back of my lead hand still faces you guys, right? I haven't turned my forearms over at all. And you'll also notice that the club face is very, very open, okay? So when you add pronation and supination, you can see that that movement is what allows the club head to go past your hands. So it'll also allow you to get the club face to, to close a little bit more, okay? And if you add that pronation in, you'll start to be able to accelerate that club head um, at a faster rate and much faster beyond the hands. So a lot of people that come in to impact believe that you just straighten out your, your trail arm and just kind of rotate from here, okay? But by doing that, you're not allowing that club head to get past you. So it's always gonna feel stuck and you're gonna always leave that face open and you're going to swing it much slower. Now, if you are one of those players that tends to release your ankles out very early and then, and then um, adds the supination and pronation in early as well, then you, you probably hook everything. And then the advice that coaches give you to hold off the club face and also rotate would actually help you if you are this kind of player. So if, if you are releasing everything early and turning over the face early and you feel like you maintain angles longer and you feel like you're not rolling over your forearms as much and you add rotation, all the coaches are trying to do is just slow down the rate at which you're turning your forearms okay, and you're dumping the angles. That's what the real goal is. We don't want to completely eliminate pronation and supination. Now, I'm not trying to suggest you guys to start rolling your forearms as hard as possible, but I just want you guys to be aware of what really happens. So if you want to ensure that you're releasing it at the right time and at the right rate, there has to be certain checkpoints that you have to look for. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some two pros on the screen. And the first checkpoint is basically forming the longest point of the golf swing after you strike the golf ball. So that's when that lead arm and the shaft will form a straight line. Now this is common among all of the good ball strikers, not just a few, but all of them. And when the radius or the longest point is formed after the golf ball, that would signify that you've hit down on it and that you've also released out the angles in your trail arm at the right time. So now if you film yourself from the face on view and you discover that you are a player that gets their longest point forming before striking the golf ball, then that would signify that the low point would most likely be behind the golf ball, right? So you're probably gonna strike the ground first. Now, the only way for you not to strike the ground is if you shorten out the longest point in some way. So for a lot of players, that's gonna come in the form of people 
raising their posture, uh, adding extension or breaking down their wrists, okay, or bending the arms, or maybe some sort of combination of those three things. So if you do release, release it out early and you compensate in time, then maybe you can strike the ball well occasionally. But by releasing the angles out early, you're adding a lot of other compensations into the, into the swing, and it's going to make things a lot more complicated and, and less consistent. So checkpoint number two happens post-impact. So now, when you form the radius just after impact, what happens is that at some point, both arms will now become extended at some point. Okay, With the trail arm and the club forming a straight line. So that's also a very, very important visual to have. A lot of people that go through impact that don't release it correctly will tend to drag their arms and club at the same rate. So you can see that the trail arm and club do not form a straight line and the lead arm is also bent. Okay, So if you can form that radius afterwards and then kind of some way in the fall through extend out both arms and have that trail arm and the, and the shaft in a straight line, that would also signify that you've released the club um, at the right time at the correct rate. And usually if you want to be, use visuals, your trail arm and club will form a straight line approximately at some point beyond your lead pocket. So what a lot of people fail to understand is that if you want both arms to straighten out and you want your trail arm and club to form a straight line, then that movement of pronation and supination become very, very important. So on the screen here with, with most of the longest hitters in the game, you'll see that they all demonstrate this. Okay, So you can see that post-impact, you'll see that their trail arm starts to straighten out totally. And then at some point beyond their lead pocket, their trail arm and the shaft will form a straight line. Now, what people also fail to understand is that that pronation and supination of the arms is what will give your arms enough range of motion or mobility to, to straighten out. Now, for some reason, a lot of people believe that all of the release comes from the body, okay? That you shouldn't be using any arms and wrists, and that's not totally true. And yes, rotation is really important. Um, the faster you rotate and the faster you can extend, um, that can actually help propel your arms faster through the shot, which will give you more speed. But the vast majority of your speed will come from how well you maneuver your arm and wrist through the shot. So the example that I like to explain to people is to imagine like your lead arm is glued against your chest. Okay, so your, your arm is glued against your chest when you're holding it. And then also you can imagine a metal bar running through your, your lead arm through the shaft. So this whole entire arm and shaft is one metal bar and you can't move it. Okay, so your lead arms against your chest glued and, the, and your arm and, and uh, shaft are frozen. Okay, so when you make a swing and you can't move and you try to hit a golf ball, it'll be very, very difficult to produce a lot of speed. You can try it for yourself. But the only way that you're able to produce more speed is if you increase the rate at which you turn and increase the rate at which you extend. Okay, so that can help you um, move your arms a bit faster, but you'll, you'll, you'll start to feel that it's very strenuous on the body. So it's not um, a totally healthy way in the long term. So that's why you're missing out on the, the majority of your speed if you can use your arm and wrist with your body. So the best drill that I know of to help you get a sense of accelerating the club head and also giving you a chance to feel out the, the proper release of the golf club is to take a full backswing and then hit the ball hard, but then try to stop your arms and hands as early and as quickly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to hit this shot and I'm going to stop it as early as I can and fall through. When you're in that position, you have to be conscious of where your, where your arms are positioned. So you want to make sure that your, both your arms are straightened out and that the trail arm and the shaft is in a straight line. Okay? So now it's important to remember that when you're trying to accelerate the club head quickly, the acceleration or speed comes from very fast deceleration. Okay? So when you, what I see a lot of golfers do is that when they go through impact, they kind of drag their hands and, and arms with the club head. And that won't allow the club head itself to actually overtake and, and move faster than your hands. So by learning to stop your hands quickly, you're allowing the momentum of the club head to now overtake your hands. So you can actually feel out 
or gain a lot more speed through impact when you do that. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss, where you can inquire about my online lessons. I will also leave a link to my website in the description box below, just so you can see all of the details. And if you have some extra time on your hands, I would encourage you guys to watch this video next. And this is a video about closing the club face, which can further enhance your understanding of release.